No. All right, it is 5.30, so I will call this regular meeting to order. Um, the Acadiana Veterans Honor Guard is here tonight for the presentation of the colors, so I ask that everyone please stand. <coughs> Please remain standing to observe a moment of silence for the victims of the Congressional Baseball Game practice shooting today. Thank you. Just a brief announcement, I'd like to remind all of us here tonight that today is Flag Day, and I have uh, I did notice several additional flags out today. I think it's apropos. Also, as a proud Army veteran, I'd like to remind everyone that uh, the Army is celebrating its 242nd birthday today. Army was formed 242 years ago today. Thank you. All right, Dr. Aguilar, opening comments. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. The uh, Lafayette Parish School System uh, has uh, funded a project focused on building teaching capacity of middle school math teachers. The goal is to support content and instructional best practices in grades 6 through 12, uh, particularly as it relates to Algebra 1. The project will involve a five-day institute beginning Monday, July 10, and ending Friday, July 14. The Institute will include daily activities, application of the content and lectures in mathematics content, and instructional best practice. There will be a second Institute with the same teachers in June of 2018. We are expecting 37 participating middle school mathematics teachers. The rationale for this Institute is embodied in the premise that effective teachers must have excellent pedagogical practices accompanied by a deep, flexible understanding of the content they teach in, which is aligned to the Common Core State Standards. It's the mission of this institute to help teachers increase their content knowledge of mathematics and develop effective instructional practices. Knowledge gained will result in increased student understanding and performance in mathematics. And just my thoughts about this institute, rather than hope for mathematics certified teachers to be interested in working in the Lafayette Parish School System. We're taking a proactive approach to training teachers to have the necessary skills to effectively teach Algebra I. So I congrat congratulate the instructional staff for pulling this off. And speaking of middle school math, this past school year, 242 eighth grade students completed Algebra I. Of those students, 212 scored the highest label of excellence on the state end of course test. That is an 87.6% of those students. 29 students scored good and only one scored fair. Congratulations to our eighth grade Algebra One teachers, students, and middle school principals for supporting this initiative. Seeing the number 242, um, it gave me an idea that we really needed to increase the number of, of eighth graders taking Algebra One. So I challenged the um, team 
target 400 students taking Algebra One in the eighth grade this upcoming school year, I'm happy to report that our schools have 395 eighth graders scheduled in Algebra One um, in the upcoming school year. Con Thank you. Congratulations to the Como High Speech and Debate Squads. They competed at the NCFL 2017 National Tournament with the top 3,000 students from over 550 schools across the country. Como Speech Team had seven students make the top 24 in their events out of all students across the nation, placing 22nd in duo Destiny Darby and Brooke Nikenan, placing 19th in, an, in, an, in oral interpretation, Maggie Graham, and placing 10th in duo, Paige Albright and Kobe Camp. Making it to the final round, placing 6th in declamation, Rashawn Lede, placing 3rd in oral interp, Quest Broussard, placing 2nd in dramatic performance, Talon Ratliff. Uh, the national champion in decl declamation is Tanny Washington Como High, speech and debate team received the School of Excellence Award and placed in the top five schools in the nation for the third consecutive year. Congratulations to our million word readers for the 1617 school year. We had over 21,000 students participate of which 934 students read over a million words. Together, these students read 5,635,241,422 words were read by these participating students. Any student who reads one million or more words with 85% or better accuracy is recognized as a million word achiever. Certificates and t-shirts were awarded to any student who became a million word achiever. The top students at each grade level district-wide are recognized as was the school with the most million word achievers. The top million word achiever for LPSS for 1617 was Maggie Lau, a Paulboro Middle 7th grader. She read 13,444,761 words. And the school with the most million word achievers was Youngsville Middle School with 130 students getting the recognition. And yesterday, the staff at Edward J. Sandler Accelerated School of Lafayette had a parent orientation meeting. It was a huge success with over 50 families showing up for the meeting. There were additional families who had not yet registered but showed up to learn more. Congratulations to Principal D Jody Duyon and her staff. If you need more information regarding Lafayette's non-traditional middle and high school, please call 521-7560 or check out their Facebook page at Ed, EJ Sam Accelerated. And lastly, uh, board members and uh, the public, please don't forget tomorrow night is our Employee Appreciation Banquet at Park Lafayette La Pavilion beginning at 6 p.m. And that concludes my remarks. Thank you. And we have a special recognition tonight for Melva Perry. Yes, ma'am. Members of the board, uh, we are losing um, our executive secretary uh, for the Lafayette Parish School System, at the school board, and the superintendent's office. Uh, Melva is uh, retiring at the end of uh, this month. Um, she is here tonight with her family. Her husband is Byron. He's sitting on the front row. Son and daughter-in-law Armando and Monica and daughter, grandson and granddaughter April, Dylan and Kaylin and her sister Becky. But I want to talk to you a little bit about Melva and the executive secretary position because Melva has worked for the Lafayette Parish School System for a total of 26 years of which four years were in the HR department. So she has worked for the superintendent and are the boards of education for uh, 22 years. During that time, uh, she's worked for nine different superintendents. And I hope and pray that it wasn't my time in office <laughs> that uh, made her make that final decision to, uh, to retire. Uh, she has been in that office so long that I told her today that she could take her chair with her because 
at, we joked about this today, the, the arms, the, the ends of the arms for the chair are kind of tattered, and it's, she said it's because I grip so hard when I'm trying to figure out what happened at a board meeting. Um, we, wish, we wish Melva the very best in retirement. Uh, I have never, ever experienced having to replace an executive sec secretary because they truly know more than the superintendent about the ins and outs of what goes on in a school system. She has uh, heard everything. She has seen literally everything. And she knows so many secrets about um, the events that have happened over um, the past 22 years in the Lafayette Parish School System that we wish for her nothing short of just happiness, good health, and many, many years of retirement. And so, Melva, if you come to the center, we want to present you with a plaque and clap and congratulate you for your years of service. Good job, good boss, not. Great job, great boss, yes. As an executive assistant to the superintendent and board, I have been given the opportunity to interact with many people, personalities, and politics. I have seen my fair share of court cases, late nights, disgruntled employees, parents, board members, superintendents, federal judges, federal marshals, picketers, hate emails, phone calls, Yes, it's all come through my office, but the show still went on. As one board member used to tell me when he came to board meetings, the circus is in town. And I used to think all we need is the popcorn and peanuts because we had plenty of clowns. How I managed to make it look easy, as many have said to me, is only through the grace of God and my family who hugged all my stress away. Many of you don't know this, but I developed a following during the board meeting reality shows. <laughs> People would have get-togethers to watch the board meetings and try to guess what vote I would announce. But of course, my all-time favorite vote is nine for, none against. My career here has never been boring. I love my job. Superintendent Aguilar, you are definitely one of nine favorite superintendents, and Dorothy Neasy, you have been a wonderful co-worker. I will miss all of you. Thank you for sharing your dreams, hopes, and silly moments with me. Thank you for all of your prayers during some trying times, but I believe the best is yet to be. Farewell. Thank you, Ms. Melva. All right, the next item on the agenda is the superintendent evaluation timeline.
Let's see. Uh, envelopes have been placed at each desk with the evaluation forms. Uh, we need to turn them in to the superintendent's office on July 24th in a sealed envelope with your signature. And then the scoring tabulators will meet on July 26. And I believe I need to appoint the tabulators, um, Mr. Santani. And Mr. Lashley is not here, so he gets volunteered for that position. <laughs> All right, the next item on the agenda are personnel changes for June 2017. Madam President, the uh, personal personnel changes are attached for your review. We do have one uh, introduction tonight, a new principal. I'll turn it over to Ms. Thibodeau. Good evening. I would like to introduce to you the new principal of Ridge Elementary School, Ms. Rhonda Dickerson. Ms. Dickerson earned a Bachelor of Arts and a Master's of Education degree from UL Lafayette. Ms. Dickerson has served as a fourth grade teacher for seven years, a curriculum coordinator for six years, and an assistant principal for seven years. Her entire service has been spent at Austin Elementary School. She was selected as Teacher of the Year at Austin Elementary and was also an LEF Award nominee. Cong congratulations, Ms. Dickerson, on your promotion to principal at Ridge Elementary School. Thank you. Madam President, board members, Dr. Aguilar, Ms. Samick, and Mr. Craig, I want to thank you for your trust in appointing me as principal of Ridge Elementary. After spending the last 20 years of my career at Austin Elementary, I have made many good friends and have had the privilege of working with great staff and a great leader. I have no doubt with my skill set and dedication, I will be able to continue the growth of Ridge. I look forward to working side by side with the staff of Ridge Elementary to accomplish our goal to become an A status school. I sincerely thank you again for this opportunity. All right, we are now to our consent agenda. I will read each item, and the board members will pull those uh, for discussion. 4.1, approval of the social studies and physical education health specialist job description. 4.2, approval of a revised job description for career and technical education resource and development coordinator. 4.3, Northside Health Center agreement. 4.4, approval of bid awards for small kitchen supplies. 4.5, approval of bid awards for dry and frozen food products. I'd like to pull that, please. 4.6, approval of bid awards for paper, plastic, and janitorial supplies. 4.7, budget revision to self-funded construction fund. 4.8, approval of quotes for Paul Bro Metal Cafeteria Air Handler Unit. 4.9, approval of quotes for Ridge Elementary Play Slab Cover. 4.10, approval of quotes for Paul Bro Middle Air Handler Replacement. Sorry, I read that one already. 4.11, approval of bids for Como High Restroom Renovations. 4.12, approval of garbage collection and recycling services contract extension. Pull that, please. 4.13, sales tax collection report for April 2017. 4.14, sales tax collection report for May 2017. 4.15, approved bid award calculators, bid number 01-18. 4.16, approved bid award duplicator ink and masters bid number 02-18. 4.17, reject all bids, lubricants, engine oil bid number 06-18. 4.18, approved bid award, bathroom paper, bid number 08-18. 4.19, approved bid award, school uniforms, homeless department, bid number 09-18. 4.20, approved bid award, number 610, limestone, bid number 10-18. 4.21, approved bid award, asphalt, cold mix, bid number 11-18. 4.22, approved bid award, sports medical supplies, bid number 03-18. 4.23, 
4.23, approved bid award, Mesh Backpack Homeless Student Services Department, bid number 12-18. 4.24, approval of bid award, Southside High School Material and Supply Bids. 4.25, listing of bids approved to be advertised by superintendent. 4.26, budget revision request for general fund Karen Crow Heights security. 4.27, finance. Board approval of servitude with the City of Lafayette LUS STEM Academy. 4.28, budget to actual reports, May 2017. 4.29, summary of grant funding and activity, May 2017. 4.30, resolution number 06-17-1910, canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the special election held April 29, 2017. Pull that, please. Four point thirty one approval to advertise and accept proposals for use of section sixteen property in Dusan. Area RFP number twenty two dash eighteen. Four point thirty two approval of right of way with Energy Louisiana LLC Milton Elementary Middle. Four point thirty three early obligation and release of funds for band uniforms for Acadiana High School. Four point thirty four resolution zero five. Dash one seven dash nineteen oh seven employment of special counsel for LPSS sales tax office. Pull that please. Four point thirty five resolution zero five dash one seven dash nineteen oh eight immigration attorney. Four point thirty six psychologist intern job description. Pull that please. 4.37, administration reorganization. 38, administration academic department reorganization. 4.39, revisions to policy file JGCE child abuse. 4.40, return to work program. 4.41, resolution 06-17-1911, designation of official journal. 4.42, approval of minutes. 4.43, approval for early obligation and release of funds for school bus cameras, 17-18 capital improvement fund, $400,000. 4.44, reorganization of the career technical education and schools of choice department. Madam President. Can you pull 4.38 as well? Okay. Madam President, I move that we approve all items not pulled. All right, we have a motion to pull all of those matters that were not pulled by a board member. The, to approve all those not pulled. Is that what I said? Oh, to approve. Second by Mr. Angel. If we have any discussion on any of those items from members of the public. Okay, members of the board, Mr. Santani. Uh, I don't know which staff member this should be directed to, but on f item 4.35, the immigration attorney, uh, can anyone give me the status of our other two immigration attorneys? Hopefully this uh, means we're replacing one and not adding a third. No. Okay, um, the attorney we were using in the past, we're not using him, so this would be the second attorney, immigration attorney, that we would have a resolution to use. Okay. Now, there's consideration of, you know, maybe other attorneys, but at this time, this would be the second attorney that okay. we would. Okay, and this is more for the public's knowledge, and because I know the answer, but we, uh, how many immersion teachers do we have in Lafayette Parish? Well, we have uh, 70 plus, but about 60 uh, teachers that are foreign immersion. Okay, and so these Im immigration attorneys typically focus on making sure that our immersion teachers are have their H-1B visa updated exactly. and are exactly. here legally and meet all of the requirements necessary for us to employ them. So exactly. thank, thank you very much. You're welcome. All right, any other comments, Mr. Knezic? Dr. Aguilar, on number 43, transportation, early obligation release of funds for the school bus cameras. 
could you just enlighten us uh, on the, what the plan was with that? What type of cameras you're looking at getting? Um, are they interior, exterior? And are these going to be integrated with the um, software programs that we have? Sure. Uh, Mr. Craig might be able to elaborate on the. So uh, we're not with approval of this agenda item. We'll we're going to set up an RFP. Mr. Francis and transportation are developing the criteria for an RFP. We're looking at uh, for four hundred thousand dollars, approximately two hundred and thirty of our buses. That's just with an estimate of seventeen hundred dollars a bus for five cameras in each bus. Uh, we'll <coughs> excuse me. We'll start out with our regular ed buses, um, and then depending on how many are left, we'll take care of activity buses, ESL, and sped buses. And these are interior cameras, five interior. Yes, sir. We'll have one pointing out the windshield to to see what's going on in front of the bus. One pointing to the right down the stairwell. One behind the driver pointing to the back. And then depending on how the RFP plays out, you'll have two, either one in the back or one on each side looking along the aisles for the students. All right. I, I know that we've had a significant discussion on the board floor regarding cameras, and one of the, one of the objectives, and I hope that's an objective on the RFP, is that we want to be able to capture data um, for bus accidents. We, we average several a month and uh, we think that it may help with uh, defending our liability with regards to uh, bus accidents so can you just make sure that um, that's a key part of the RFP so the bus routing software that we're using that we're implementing at this time it does with the GPS unit track hard stopping speeding running lights the cameras that were putting out on bid the data will be stored on SD cards it'll periodically overwrite but they'll time stamp them for any incidents uh, but that the cameras themselves won't be tied into the the software for bus routing and the GPS units also data storage uh, data is as I understand it I'm not an IT guy but relatively inexpensive so the longer we can save the data um, it may help us with incidents that are brought up uh, months and months after the incident allegedly mm -hmm. occurred and actually, uh, you bring that up, Mr. Francis, in transportation, we were bouncing that question around yesterday in terms of what we'd like to consider for the RFP. Great. Thank you. All right. If there are no further comments or questions, I'll call for the vote. Seven four, went up staying. All right, the first item pulled was four point five. Uh, the approval of bid awards for dry and frozen food products. Uh, Mr. Hidalgo. Yes, ma'am. I move that the board approve staff's recommendation of award of the dry food bid with the exception of line item numbers five, six. 40, 45, 54, 63, 98, and 101. Can I get a second? Second by Mr. Angel. All right, any questions or comments from members of the public on this item? Okay, it's All right. Members of the board, Mr. Yeah, Madam President, the lowest bidder requested to withdraw their bid. Uh, I would like to ask either Mr. Francis or someone from the administration to come forward who can explain what's going on. <coughs> Lee Francis, purchase an agent. Yes, Mr. Hidalgo. So um, it appears that the lowest bidder requested to withdraw their bid. Can you tell us why and um, 
and explain the the administration's recommendation at this point basically how it was explained to me is that the lowest bidder is in texas and they were basically awarded eight items out of this bid um they feel on their part it's not financially um you know responsible for them to to do this according to that so um there is a provision within the bid specifications uh, that allows them to withdraw their bid after 30 days of the bid opening. The bid opening was on April 27th, so we are past the 30 days. So that does give the uh, bidder the opportunity to withdraw their bid if they want to. Um, we have been advised by Hammonds and Seals that if a bidder wants to withdraw, we should you know, grant them the ability to withdraw. Thank you. Okay, and Mr. Hidalgo, the numbers that you listed as part of your motion, those were recommendations made by staff? Yes. Those are particular items listed in the bid? Yes, ma'am. Right, any other questions or comments from the board? Then, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Eight four, none against. All right, the next item pulled was 4.12, approval of garbage collection and recycling services contract extension. Mr. Knezic. Madam President, I move that we approve the garbage collection and recycling services contract extension. Second. All right, do we have any questions or comments on this item from members of the public? All right, members of the board. Uh, I just think that this is an opportunity for us to celebrate uh, some forward thinking by uh, staff and then and, and, uh, subsequent approval by the board to implement a pilot recycling program last year. Not only uh, was the program successful in uh, reducing waste at landfills and sending more items to recycling, but it also is resulting in a cost savings to the um, district of over 10%. So it looks like we're able to cut our uh, disposal services by recycling. So I think it's uh, bravo Zulu, as they say in the Navy, but, you know, attaboy, good job. So, something. Uh, we're doing something right, guys. We, we are definitely um, recycling more, very effectively. Just so that the public understands, uh, we had uh, recycling at 20 sites. Those uh, 20 sites uh, collected 38.2 tons of recyclable materials, pulling that from the waste stream, going to the landfills. The savings in being able to downsize the regular container bins on those 20 campuses equates to about a savings of $25,000 to the total contract. We are... Um, We've already talked with waste management. We would like to extend re the recycling program to all uh, school board sites. We believe we will double the savings and continue to work to reduce the waste stream in Lafayette Parish. So congratulations to the schools, um, including the central office, for pulling out of the waste stream 38 tons of recyclable material. All right, any further questions or comments from the board? Then Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Madam President, may I make one quick comment while yes. we wait? Uh, one of the two ladies who were instrumental in, in encouraging I'll use the word encouraging uh, dr. Aguilar to pursue this in in the garbage contract uh, miss Catherine Como she uh, just to let everybody know that she's like this every day she showed up at a, at a party very recently and uh, I very jokingly said 
Y'all better hide. She's going to bring her uh, her plastic forks over here, guys. Y'all better hide them. And she reaches into her, her purse, and she takes out real silverware that she carries with her everywhere so that she doesn't throw plastic forks away. So just to let you know, she is committed in, in one of the reasons why we did this. And I, I, I doubt we would have seen the success that we that we have without her and Miss Waddell. Eight for and then against. All right, the next item pulled is 4.30, resolution number 06-17-1910, canvassing the returns and declaring the results of the special election. Okay, Mr. Angel. Madam President, I think, uh, um, allow me real quick. The, uh, I believe there was an issue with the wording. I wanted to move that we adopt resolution 06-17-1910. All right, so a motion by Mr. Santani, second by Mr. Angel. All right, any questions or comments on this item from members of the public and members of the board? All right, then, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Consider and take it. Okay. Okay. Take that part out. Hurry up, all the way up to resolution. I'm, I'm reading the. Is this the motion the way it should read? So they're correcting that. They don't vote yet because they're correcting the language. Don't vote yet. This is the mm -hmm. correcting the language on the motion. Hey, is it is it too late to take out any lawful purpose? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Couldn't resist. The motion has been corrected. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Eight for and then against. All right, the next item that was pulled is 4.34, resolution 05-17-1907, employment of special counsel for LPSS sales tax office. Mr. Hidalgo. Yes, ma'am. That uh, was another uh, formality. I move that uh, we approve resolution 05-17-1907 as amended to include an effective date of June 1st, 2017. Second. All right. Any questions or comments on this item from members of the public and okay, members of the board? All right, then, Mr. Santani. It's Miss Ashy. Can you come see, please? Hey, Mr. Santani. Come see, please. Remember uh, two years ago, whenever Mr. Knezik and I met with, with you and Mr. Simpson, we when we were kind of reorganizing the sales tax collection office, that we requested that you inquire about having some of these litigation cases handled by the district attorney. Did, did we ever do that? We did. We did try doing, sending some NSFs over, and it was not successful. We ended up having to pull them back and turning them over to a, our collection, uh, collection attorney. 
that, that this resolution is for our special counsel for when we're sued in like the um, Board of Tax Appeals, he specializes in sales tax law. Okay, so this is not for prosecution, this is for defense. Correct, yes, Thank sir. you very much. All right, any further questions, Mr. Guidry? Uh, yes, I would like to add that uh, when, when we do send uh, some of these uh, issues to the attorney for collection, uh, their fees are added to the assessment and are paid by the taxpayers, not, not by the school system. All right, if there are no further questions or comments, I'll call for the vote. Eight four none against. I just wanted to remind Melva that it might not be this throughout the meeting, but the last four votes were unanimous, Melva. <laughs> All right, the next item is four point thirty six psychologist intern job description, Mr. Knezic. I move that we approve the psychologist intern job description. Second. Okay. Second by Mr. Hidalgo. Any questions or comments on this item from members of the public? Questions or comments from the board? I have some comments and questions. Okay, and, Mr. Uh, Knesset. I move for approval, uh, but I and I do think we need to approve it, but I do think we need to have a healthy discussion on what it is that we're doing with uh, the psychologist interns, how much we plan to pay them. I uh, believe that we are starting them around, well, I'll let the expert tell us. Mr. Knizic, the job description you have is for 187 days. So at 187 days, the pers the teacher would or the psychologist would come in making $42,564. So. And for my fellow board members that may not have been at the executive committee, this is a college graduate uh, with a psychology major who does not yet have their, and please correct me if I speak out of turn, uh, does not yet have their master's degree, uh, but these positions are hard to fill, so we are uh, going to fill them with uh, those with bachelor's degrees, and we're able to do that by way of waiver, well, they will have a provisional certificate. Provisional certificate. They, ha they have to go through this internship in order to be certified as a psych school psychologist. So it's a requirement for them. And we've advertised for school psychologists many times and can't find them. So we're going to take an existing position and put an intern and it helps the intern get their hours and then they will, be, uh, they will graduate. But they will um, have a provisional certificate. We will apply for that. They'll be eligible when they apply with us and we'll apply for the certificate or either they'll come in to us and the school will have applied for the certificate. It's an L it is a um, provisional psychologist certificate that they give to interns that meet the requirements. They will have had to have a bachelor's degree and so many hours within, uh, in their master's program. And the 54,866 for 202 days that we have on this spreadsheet is for uh, a school psychologist with certification and with a master's degree. Is that correct? Right. It's the entry level. Okay. So if we brought that position down to 187 days, that person would make $50,810 a year. So No, sir. No? No, sir. That's on a one and a third. That's a psychologist gets a one and a third a pupil appraisal pay. Okay. What I'm trying to figure out is the difference in pay between someone with their master's degree and someone with one of these interns. These people will be on two different pay scales. The, per, the intern is going to be on a teacher pay scale or it will say the instructional pay scale. And the psychologist is on the one and a third. After they finished all of their requirements, we will, they would... So say they finish the year and we want to hire them full time, then they would come in on the one and the third pupil appraisal scale, which is much higher than the 
regular teacher. And how long can they be an intern? Uh, just for the year. I believe they have so many hours. Okay, but they can't just, like, if they don't finish the, their credentialing or their master's degree, we would not hire them for a second year. Is that correct? That, that is correct. Okay. All right. I have no further questions. Mr. Angel. I have a question. <clears throat> Whenever you say teacher scale and non-teacher scale, it kind of it kind of makes my my ears open up a little bit more. So, do we pay a, a, a bachelor degree person, psychologist? Maybe I'm saying the wrong word, psychologist to be or whatever, on the same scale as a teacher? No, sir. And a psychologist has to have a master, so they wouldn't even be considered. Well, the well, the intern are the ones that don't have the masters yet. They're going to be put on the instructional scale. Is that similar to teachers? Uh, uh, the, yeah, the teachers, are. it would be the same pay as a teacher, yes. Right, same pay as a teacher. All right. And then when they get a master's degree, you, you change the pay scale. You use another scale? Right. Well, it's a one and a third. That's what people appraisal make, or one and a third. When a teacher gets a master's degree, does she get one and a third pay scale? No, sir. No? Hmm. That was a state. Uh, at one time, the bulletin 741 had, I believe it's bulletin 741, it came from the state that pupil appraisal made one and a third. So that's a state? It was, oh. it, it was at one time, and I believe it still is that pupil appraisal makes one and a third. So we mandated to pay that by the state? Right, right. All right, thank you. Ms. Morrison. Yes. Is there any additional supervision for the interns versus the psychologists? Yes. They have to yes, be supervised. And absolutely. They have to sign off on everything they do or? Yes, absolutely. Thank you. All right. If there are no further questions or comments, I'll call for the vote. Eight for, none against. All right, the next item is 4.37, administration reorganization. Mr. Broussard. It's motion that the board approve eliminating the position of instructional strategy and to reorganize the administrative department by creating position of instructional leaders and to change from present day's pay to 192. Second. Second by Mr. Hidalgo. Any questions or comments on this motion from members of the public? The motion that's on the screen doesn't reflect uh, Mr. Broussard's numbers of 1 in 92. Oh, it popped up for a second. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Well, may Make we sure clarify the, green the light is on? May we clarify the motion very quickly? Yeah, hang on one second. Because the job description does say 187 days, so this motion passes. We would be altering that to 192. Thank you. All right. So, are y'all correcting the words of the motion? All right. Yes, ma'am. Okay, good evening. My name is Adrian Bodin. I'm the instructional strategist at Milton Elementary Middle School, which is a pre-K to 8 school. And I'm here to talk about, um, on Monday night when I was here for the executive meeting, um, Mr. Hidalgo asked, what is the need? And so we feel that our need, I'm here representing the group of strategists, a lot of them have emailed you. Please, if you have not checked your email, please do so. But our need, we feel, is that we need to work five days before and five days after, which represents the 192. Before school, um, we compiled a list of what it is that I do on my campus, and a lot of us share the same. Um, planning and preparing back to school PD for the school-based um, 
for the school-based PD, PD on the vision set forth by the LPSS, attending trainings and sessions in preparation for the upcoming school year on new or updates to existing programs to better be prepared for the start of the school. Already on my calendar, I have four days that I'm required to be at trainings starting July 24th. So that's already started, which is what we need as strategists because we need to continue to grow ourselves to be able to help the teachers. So if we aren't getting the trainings, we aren't able to come back and filter it to present to our student, um, our teachers. Use current data to make appropriate placements in both remedial and extension classes. Work with the admin team to develop a plan of action for PD throughout the school year using LEAP testing data released over the summer to begin to identify and create a plan of action for students who are non-proficient. Work to create a policy and procedure handbook for schools in preparation for going one-to-one -one, and prepare C PD centered around technology and preparation for going to one-to-one. -to -one. Those were my responsibilities before school. After the school year ends, attend district trainings for redelivery for to staff in the upcoming year, attend teacher leader summit for redelivery to, ta to staff, analyze and organize end of year data to assist in creating balanced class rosters for the 2017-2018 school year, assist in developing the master schedule ensuring common planning time in K-8 to and maximizing instructional minutes with limited transitions, which on a campus that is K-8, to that is quite a task, but we were able to group our teachers so that they have common planning time because I'll have a day where I sit in SBLC and work with my students that I deal with in RTI, PLC on elementary and PLC for middle on two separate days of the week. Support administration in establishing an RTI plan for the upcoming year. Identify students, identify placement, identify instruction for individual students. Meet with the QCAR team to establish school-wide goals and prepare presentations for these goals and assist in establishing an instructional professional development calendar which includes weekly PD. So we do a lot and I invite you to come if you still don't understand what we do to come visit me any day next year to come and hang out and just see what we go through. We do have a connection to the class. My connection to the classroom is my RTI students. I have over 100 kids in RTI, K to eight, and every week I progress monitor them. I sit with them, they read to me or do whatever their skill they need to do, and we watch their data and we talk about goals and we set goals with them. A lot of my kids when I started this year didn't know they could get out of RTI, and that was my goal. And I'm not sure without there, it takes a lot of time and effort for that. So this position is warranted and appreciated by a lot. And I would appreciate your vote to keep us going five before and five after. You're getting 10 back and we're getting to keep 10 because we need it. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from the public? All right, from the board, Mr. Centani. What a question oh, about. I'm sorry. Ms. Thibodeau? I just wanted to say we prepared some documentation just so you would have it and we'd like to just hand it out if you don't mind. Sure. All right. Mr. Santani. I'd like to ask from a management point of view, the you know, obviously we had this conversation last month about strategists and whether to keep eleven cut eleven, keep forty two and 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 all this other stuff. Um is it trying to think how to how to say this I fear that we are going to make the job unattractive because of the difference in pay from what a classroom teacher makes and what an instructional strategist makes and we can argue about what's more valuable and and, and things like that but um, you know the we face the same problem with the principals, which we voted to give, uh, I think, $160,000 to raise their average pay. There ends up being the longer that a teacher is in the classroom and the 2002 sales tax increases their salary, the closer they get to their manager's salary. And it becomes difficult to encourage and value leadership when you don't compensate them. I mean, there's there's workplace issues when when employees make roughly the same amount as their their managers, and so I'm concerned. Not that they don't need a 202 days or need 210 days or whatever it you know whatever the argument about the days is. I'm concerned from a strategic management point of view that we are cutting everything instead of exploring other options. And maybe you guys discuss this at the 
executive committee meeting about possibly sharing instructional strategists between schools that are not as large as others or some other method of doing this. But it, it seems to me that either the job is valuable or it's not. It seems like we discussed this at length last month and came to a decision that the job was valuable. And now we're here um, reducing the, the cost of the job, which, you know, I understand it's, it's, it's a good, good idea to try to, to not overpay or to not have more days than are needed. But at some point, we're going to make the job unattractive to where no one wants to do it. Just general concerns. Madam President. Oh. Mr. Angel. Uh, I, 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 saw, I question somewhat that instructional strategists manage teachers. Um, I think teachers manage their classrooms. Um, I, I, I just. Um, I just kind of have a little problem with that. If they are managers of teachers, if, if instructional strategists are managers of teachers, then I think you're adding another layer of bureaucracy between the teacher, the assistant principal, and the principal. I mean, historically, the assistant principal or the principal, uh, I, I remember Dr. Aguilar saying he wants principals to be in the classroom or walking in the halls 60% of their time. So. If, if, if you want to call these instructional strategies another management, then you're adding another layer of bureaucracy. And I'm not sure that they're managers. I'm, I'm not assuming we're adding another layer of bureaucracy. But if, 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 if we have to be careful. Our, our main goal was, of course, to try to get some 6,000 of our students in, in, a, in a normal, regular classroom. And we are working on cutting where we can without without too much detriment to our students and so uh, keeping the main goal in mind to treat all all of our students the same by giving all of our students uh, the opportunity to be in a bricks and mortar building rather than a tin building when you can't hear part of the time when it's raining or getting wet when you change classes let's keep them in mind as well w w w this is not being discussed to hurt anybody or to or to you know to try to do anything negative to anyone but let's think of all of our our system let's let's think of all of our system including the most important part of our system our students mr bruce Ord. i agree with uh mr michelle but perhaps by reorganizing the job duties from instructional strategists to instructional leaders. Uh, perhaps the administration would lessen their workload so that there's no need for the five before and five afterward. And uh, perhaps they're doing more than their job description tells them to do. But I'm willing to, I guess, or, or if they're willing to take a look at the new job, job prescription, may be more suitable to where we want to be. Mr. Hidalgo. just wanted to say briefly that the conversation at the executive committee meeting, I, I sat in in Mr. Angel's spot, was, from my perspective, from my comments, a lot more about the need, as, as uh, Ms. Adrian uh, stated, how many days are needed as opposed to making the conversation about money. I agree with you about an unattractive position and not being able to attract as good of talent. Unfortunately, we have, you know, 27, I don't know how many teachers we have, 2,000 somewhat uh, 100 teachers and and many of them would probably argue that their pay is not where it should be which then makes their position unattractive I'm not trying to split hairs I just think that we need to find that number um, of days that are needed to perform the duties of the job and unfortunately unfortunately one more time unfortunately we we can't worry uh, we, we shouldn't worry about <clears throat> the financial impact if we're going to then we have to worry about the social workers days we cut in other positions in the past and then we also have to look and see what other employees in the district are doing a lot more work or working more days that they may not be getting paid for um, the instructional strategists need time before and after school to prepare according to their job description and duties and I, I agree with that, and I think that we should we should definitely give them what they need. And the superintendent, if everything was stated correctly, and I trust that it was, you know, the instructional strategists are on, um, unbeknownst to some of them that were here, 
uh, the night of the uh, meeting. They are on the instructional pay scale, and so the increase in pay um, that was given to the principals you spoke of and others uh, should follow through as well. So I'm hoping and praying that the number uh, is not as far as what is believed uh, to be uh, off from their pay, and uh, hopefully we can hopefully we can support a good number of days that ultimately support our students. So, Dr. Aguilar, I'm going to put you on the spot. And uh, your recommendation, you've analyzed this. You've talked to your principals. You're the instructional leader of the entire system. Your recommendation in this uh, document is 187 days. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir, Mr. I think Fowler. I forgot one of the most important parts is that Mr. Centennial was right on the money. It was decided by this board that the instructional strategists are, yeah, you're right about something tonight. It was decided <coughs> by this board that the instructional status positions are very important positions to this district. And so um, I believe that um, it doesn't, I know you were not necessarily suggesting this. However, I believe that it doesn't make any sense to cut and split them up. That, that's to the detriment of the student. What we're doing here is going, it obviously, clearly, is going to affect their pocketbook. But I don't think the answer would be the alternative, which is cutting positions and then splitting the positions. And I know you were not suggesting that, but something you said kind of, uh, oh, you were suggesting that? Yeah, please do, because that's, I don't like that idea. Well, that was exactly what I was suggesting, because... I would say I would point out that a school like Lafayette High School, who has over 2,300 students, has one instructional strategist. I believe there's 130 something teachers there, and a school like Myrtle Place has 350 students and has one instructional strategist, and they have about 17 to 20 teachers there. So clearly, there's a little bit of a, a discrepancy in, you know. I know this. I know the strategists are working with teachers on on all kinds of different things, but you know, to have one work with 130 and one work with 20, like I feel like somebody is either underutilized or stretched beyond their means. Was my entire point about possibly combining elementary schools or something along those lines? It's worth at least it's worth at least exploring because, fortunately, we do have to look at the the financial impact. You know, that's the that's the cost side of the cost benefit. We talk a lot about the benefit, but not a whole lot about the cost. And there's a there's a cost benefit analysis that we're responsible for doing. Well, it was discussed, uh, in fact, and the idea was that the high school strategist may not have the exact same rigorous duty as maybe a middle school strategist because of where the students are in their education. And so it's totally unfair to look at the model that was presented to us before where we would cut 11, for example, and they would all come from A and B schools. And I can assure you that would be middle schools, uh, a lot in my district, and that is the wrong thing to do. It's not right, I said it before, to penalize schools that are doing really well um, uh, for the benefit of anyone else. It's not, it's not right. If, you, if we're going to do it, then let's do it across the board. Thank you. Mr. Angel. I want to emphasize, uh, as, as a former teacher, and I know I'm, I'm looking at one for sure, but as a former teacher, and I'm, I'm sure it hasn't changed, teachers work many days, mostly before the, the first day of school, preparing for their lessons, getting ready. They, they, they uh, I'm not going to say decorate, but they, they post pictures on the walls of the classroom. They, you know, make sure everything is, 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 is up to snuff. And they don't, they don't get any, they don't get paid for that. They, they do it because they want to be ready when the students come. And, and when, they, when their students come, these teachers have, what, 25 or so kids every 40 or 50 minutes. I mean, there's almost no, no break in the day for them. And uh, they could use some time before and after school, too, to do their paperwork and to prepare for their lessons, et cetera, et cetera. And they do it, but they do it on their own time. So as I said Monday night at the executive committee meeting, if the recommendation was to cut to 182 days, the same as teachers, I would support that wholeheartedly. One of the reasons we're having this discussion now is that during the budget process, the recommendation was made by staff to cut 11 positions. 
and we got many emails from instructional strategists and had some comments from principals that we need our instructional strategist. So instead of cutting our positions, cut our days. So I think that having them go to the same thing that teachers are is reasonable and appropriate. I think that every single teacher in this parish, if we told them, would you like to have five extra days to prepare for your school year? They would say, absolutely, yes, sign us up today. We can't do it, and we're looking at this from a financial standpoint. So we chose to not cut positions with the understanding that we would come back and cut the number of days for financial reasons. So the recommendation tonight is for 187 days. So it's not for 182. So I will support 187 days, but I won't support 192. Dr. Schessel. I simply wanted to voice my opinion on this current situation. A couple of us were speaking about it behind closed doors, and I'm either in favor of either you're going to cut something or you're going to leave them as is. And I just, I'm not in favor of affecting their particular number of days when it boils down to that's what I was hired at. I mean, when I signed up for my job as a Walmart pharmacist, they told me how many days I was going to work. And based upon Walmart's stockholders wanting to cut the budget, then this goes against what I was hired at. So that's what basically affects me. Uh, I'm in favor of leaving the strategists at the number of days that they're currently at and then simply finding that cost saving somewhere else. Uh, so with that being said, I would like to make a substitute motion, but I'm not quite sure if this would be the appropriate time because I know there are other things that I'd still like to look at in the budget to find said savings. So I would just like a quick cost breakdown just so I can make sure I, got, I have my head wrapped around it. When it comes down to going from 202 to 192. Can somebody tell me what that cost savings would be? Okay, thank you, sir. Dr. Chasson, if you look at the bottom of your page and it says um, what the cost of um, the instructional strategists are at 202 days, and then it would say, and then it, b below that is if they work 182 days in savings from 202 days, and then 187 days savings from 202 days, how much it would be for savings from, if you go to 182 days, you'd say $264,011. If you go to 187 days, you go to, you save $195,533. Um, 187 days, you'd save an $195,533, and if you go to 192 days, you save $127,055. Okay. So if this did happen to pass, I'm not sure what the votes will end up looking like. So to go from 202 to 192, that would be $127,000 if this currently passes. Am I looking at that correctly, guys? Yes, sir. That is correct. To go from 202 days, what the strategists are currently working, it's on the second page, bottom bottom right. To go from 202 to 192, basically if Mr. Broussard's motion passes, we'll save $127,000. And I just, I just think that we can find $127,000 within our very, very large system to keep them at what they were basically hired at. I'd like to make a substitute motion to allow the instructional strategist to remain at the current days that they're working. Second. All right, we have a substitute motion for 202 days with a second by Mr. Centani. <coughs> Hi, Catherine Guillory, strategist at LJ Alamo. Um, I just wanted to clarify 
Mr. Angel mentioned that he thought we might be another layer of management. We have absolutely no control over what the teachers do. We don't have any control over hiring. We don't discipline, for lack of a better word, teachers when they don't follow through. We are strictly there as support, as a coach. So I just wanted to clarify that for him so that there seems to be a, a lot of discussion about whether or not we're another layer of administration and we are absolutely not we have none of those duties and none of those responsibilities thank you any further discussion on the substitute motion yes ma'am to clarify the motion is to is it to adopt the new job basically, description but at 202 days basically to do nothing basically so not even to change the job description no, ma'am. It's just the notion of their number of days being worked. All right, I, I so don't we, want to affect that. Okay. So you want to adopt the proposed new job description, but at, a, at 202 days. So yes, same thing as Mr. Broussard's motion, but at 202 days. Because there's also a change in job description. May I ask a, qualif a qualifying question of Dr. Aguilar? Um, I presume the 187-day job description, the duties were tailored so, so that they only required 187 days. Um, I, I, would, I would presume that it would be better for us to do nothing than to adopt the 187, the instructional leader at 202. 202 days, correct? So, so members of the board, we gave you a document tonight that looks at um, the variance in the work schedule. So it would be to your advantage if you're so inclined to maintain the cur current job description at, at the current number of days. I'm sorry, Madam President. Yes, sir. Dr. Aguilar, so at the what I, what I just gathered, please correct, correct me if I'm wrong, that you all provided this document, color-coded, thank you very much. I did read it, and I did notice that the new job description was shorter. My question that I had at the executive committee meeting was the proposed job description is shorter than the current job description. Does that simply mean that it has been condensed, or has the job description changed? And every indication from that meeting was, well, it was just condensed. However, now it seems like what we're saying is let's not change the job description if we're going to keep the same number of days because if we do, they have less work and more days. So which is it? Well, it's a combination of both. Um, the new job description focuses more on their duties impact students and student outcomes. The, the previous current job description was defined and articulated in such a way that they worked closely with classroom teachers, professional development. We did provide a variance in the expectations based on the number of days worked. So we're not asking, we're not expecting those individuals to do the same magnitude of work by having 15 days, fewer days to work. So we did change the job description to change the focus, and we also changed the expectations about duties based on 15 fewer days of work. Right, then it seems that we don't need, we can withdraw the motion to approve that Mr. Broussard made and go from there rather than a substitute motion to get us back to where we are before the recommendation. But Mr. Dr. Chausson, it's your motion, so. Question. Their new job description still has them reporting to school before the school year begins to help prepare for PD, correct? Um, Dr. Shasson, we uh, recommended three days before and two days after in the close of school. He's making a substitute motion, so you need to clarify. Well, the issue at hand was the notion that they were going to be reduced, and I didn't want the strategist to be reduced. Yes, Mr. Sandani. 
I think you would be well served to uh, if you would consider changing your motion that uh, the board retain the instructional strategist job description. Current, current job description. Based upon staff's recommendation when it comes to the previous job description, those particular requests or job duties aren't necessary of the strategist anymore? Or was this as or was this in an attempt to scale down what was required of them so we could meet said days required? Dr. Chasson, I believe all of those items listed in that color-coded document take place. They take place on a regular basis before school and after school ends. But when you look down that list of duties, keep in mind, we talk about size of the school and the fact that each school has one instructional strategist. Keep in mind, it's an economy of scale. The larger the school, the more professionals are available to help be the the collaborative team to take care of all of the needs for that school. So large schools have more assistant principals, additional guidance counselors, have the, the capacity to have the adults present to take care of the duties. When I look at some of the duties, clearly, clearly they fall under the responsibility of the principal, the assistant principal, or and or the guidance counselor. These are not all duties that are expected to be done merely by the instructional strategist. So when we pull those expectations away from the strategist because they're <coughs> not working those 15 extra days, those duties are going, going to have to be performed at the school level by the personnel at that school. So uh, just another quick question. Looking at the 10 days post and two days post, are, are we adding more RTI? I, I see RTI a whole lot more. We're we adding more RTI to the current job description? No? Okay. Because just based upon looking at this, I mean, I just received this document no more than 10 minutes ago. Just looking at all the specific job descriptions or benchmarks, bullet points versus a very broad as, a, as, as opposed to making schedules and planning PLCs and creating standards and updating student binders, it says prepare opening school activities. It's the same thing. It just looks like we condensed it, made it smaller. I just have a feeling that they're going to do the exact same work and not do anything less, and we just we just made it a little bit neater for the eye. Uh, okay, so with that being said, um, yes, ma'am, I don't mind changing my uh, my motion. to reflect the original job description and leaving them at 202 days. Yeah, and if it passes or not, I mean, I am obviously in favor of one or the other, but I just truly feel we can find $127,000 or two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, before the board votes, I'm not gonna say I'd like to caution the board, but I tend to choose people over technology. And I'd rather people in the classrooms, on the campus, in kids' faces making a difference. Um I mean we've got we've got the data ion situation that we've been discussing for the longest time where that's going to be a recurring two hundred and thousand two hundred thousand dollars or so and as opposed to spending money on data ion I'd rather spend it on the people that truly make the difference because I've just 
kind of become conditioned to before technology. I mean, that computer at work can't really turn itself on until I start working. And I'm the one that makes the difference in the lives of the people that I help as opposed to the actual technology. So if you guys would like to, you can certainly just use the money from Data Ion. It's just my opinion. All right, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote on that substitute motion. Three, four, five against. All right, then we still have the original motion on the floor to uh, adopt the revised job description at 192 days. I would yes. Add. Can anyone tell me, will the existing strategists have to reapply for their jobs? Or will they simply be transferred into this new job description? Mrs. Centani, they'll be all offered to remain in their current position. And thank, thank you very much. And they will not have to reapply. Um, for the attorney, Danielle, since this is a substitute motion, if it fails at well, it's the original motion, but because we had the substitute, if it fails, are we able to come back with anything else? All right. All right. Any additional discussion on the current motion at 192 days? With the Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Four, four, four against. All right, the motion fails. Mr. Angel. I would rec make a motion that based on the recommendation of the s superintendent and his staff that we uh, go along with that recommendation, which is, is it 187, Doc? And, and then you drop description. I'll second. All right, any further discussion? All right, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. Okay. 
Madam President, I have a question. I actually have a question for uh, our lovely and esteemed attorneys. I don't support 192, hence the reason why I voted against it. However, we're further going in the uh, other direction. Now, at that point, I'm hoping this still fails or we're at a stalemate. But if it does pass, I can't support 187. So therefore, then I'd like to go back to 192. So at what point and how do I rectify that? Well, you know what? Let's just see how it goes. And we can take that up directly afterwards. It's a reconsideration. Right. Dr. Chasson, this uh, all depends on how you voted on 192. Correct. I don't support 192. I support vote? 202. So Did you I voted vote no. No. Five, four, three against. All right. Oh, Mr. Santani. Madam President, I move that we reconsider the vote to establish the instructional leader job description out of 192 days. I voted yes. Well, no, Timmy has to do it because we were. But, but right, this is a motion that passed. So we, it's on this particular motion on this. This motion passed. So you can reach dead in the this, water, but not the prior ones. Prior. That's right. Madam President. I'd just like to state for the record, I think this is the monkey show that Mrs. Melville was speaking of earlier. Well, we wanted to make her last meeting interesting. All right, the last item on the agenda is 4.38, Administration Academic Department Reorganization, and this is the one involving the social workers. Uh, that was Mr. Hidalgo. Yes. Um, one of, like. I'd like to make a motion to move approval. All right. Second. All right. Motion by Mr. Hidalgo, second by Ms. Morrison. Any questions or comments from the public? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? Then, Madam Secretary, I'll call for the vote. I think I'll put it, yeah. Yeah, but yes. Give them 192. 
Yeah, I don't think. No, no. just voted no for 192. So we... Yeah, I don't think we can reconsider, Dr. Shasson. But we do have this current motion that's already on the floor that we've all voted on, except for No, me. I understand, but before the meeting, the person that voted yes can reconsider for 192. I don't want to reconsider. You I don't, don't, don't want to reconsider. I know. I mean, we're in the middle of a motion, so I'm not sure that we can have these discussions. So. Madam President, we have a motion on the floor. We this do. is discussion on something. I know. Else. Yeah, so I'd like to complete this motion. Everybody's voted except for you, Dr. Chasson. Are you going to vote or abstain or? The last item, and I've already called for the vote. All right. Eight for, then against. All right. Am I in line to speak now, Ms. Morris? Yes. Okay. Uh, the reason why I jumped with exclamation because to my understanding, when Mr. Centani started to speak, I was gonna simply ask someone who voted yes on the prevailing side to simply reconsider. When he was told no, I didn't quite <laughs> understand it. So I just wanted to double check with our attorneys who informed me I actually indeed was correct. Mr. Centani or anyone that voted yes can reconsider. We would have to then vote on the reconsideration and then we can take up the matter again. So for him to have been told no was incorrect. Right, except that the motion that he, the reconsideration came up on was the motion that passed at 187 and he voted no on that one correct so we've already passed something and so you want to skip that one for act like it never happened and then go back to a previous vote that failed so I don't think that undoes the motion that passed so I think the consideration has to be on the motion that passed at 187 days Well, because we had a follow-up motion on the exact same topic, and it passed. So if we're going to reconsider any motion, it needs to be the one that passed, not the previous one that failed on the exact same topic. Right. On the motion that passed for 187 days. Right. So yes, the motion to reconsider was just on the incorrect motion. It had to be on the 187 day. Yes, ma'am. He That's did not vote yes on that one. No, I, Ms. Marsh, trust okay. me. I, I've read Roberts, and, Roberts rules backwards and forwards. I understand that my, my first go round around the, around the panel was to see who voted yes for the 187. Yeah. So my request of them was to see if they would mind reconsidering. And if no one does, then at that point I'm informing Mr. Centani, then he can address the 192, right? I think he came up and gave you information that he had voted yes and you voted no, but that was on the prior motion at 192, so. All right, then we will adjourn this meeting. Thank you.